This is Mommying While Muslim, recorded live and unedited. Watch as Zeba and Uzma record their podcast, see their reactions, and find out for yourself what all the buzz is about. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mommying While Muslim podcast. This is Uzma Jaffrey. And this is Seba Hassan, and I'm having my fifth snow day in a row today. So you probably don't see this. Like It's like a party up here, but I'm in my pajama bottoms down there because there is no point in getting dressed at this point of the day. The DMV area people are super weak in their, their, cold, their cold accountabilities and their snow, their, snow, um, their snow acceptances, and I can't stand it but you know my kids got three weeks of winter vacation and yeah. we are really living it up Having really the togetherness time <laughs> living it up here uh, in the Hassan household so I know you've been crazy busy what have you been up to this week um I started a new book this week and I'm really excited writing it or reading no. it I know I suck. I still haven't gone back after that last edit, like crippled me to write the book. And I I don't know what to do. I think I just have to send it to you and you'll have to kick my butt. And like, yeah, I'll read it. I'll read it. So let's send it to me. And what is the book that you are looking into? uh, The book is called. Well, I'm nice about it. Yeah. Fault lines. Okay. Yeah. So have you read it before? I haven't, but I've heard it, and I've even seen the the picture, the title, and like the picture of the book. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? I've literally just started it, um, so I think I'm only on like chapter two. But okay. um, it's about uh, family estrangement, and yes. I think that that's uh, you know well the so far the premise of chapter one has been it's a really prevalent problem. Like a quarter of Americans have some kind of family estrangement or have experienced family estrangement. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, there's a lot of isolation apparently for people. Like there's so much shame and guilt behind it Mm -hmm. that um, they usually don't talk about it. So I'm thinking, hello, podcast series. Yeah, exactly. Let's (laughs) talk about it. Um, Because as everybody knows, on some level, I I do that. I'm just being open um, about that, you know, because there are certain things that I'm willing to accept, um, whether you're blood related to me or not. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do go through period, I always say I go through blocking periods where I block people and then I kind of get to my right stage of mind and then slowly let people back in to the extent that I, but then I get burned every single time. So perhaps I will be reading this fault lines and I'll letting send people it know to you when that I'm done. <laughs> Please send it to me when you're done. But, yeah. um, you know, that is a huge thing. And part of the, the reason why I think a lot of people are doing, I'm surprised to hear the number at 25%, um, because I would, I would actually expect it to be higher, to be honest with you, because oh. what we're trying to do is break that, that, um, the trauma be, from being passed from generation to generation, mm-hmm. which kind of is where that estrangement or that familial estrangement actually um, is trying to do. It's not just you're annoying and I don't like you and this, it's really about like s- severe trauma that people have experienced. So um, I'd be interested to see what the, the book is about, but yeah. I know that, you know, you are rate, like you talk about our different things and perhaps this could be a soapbox on another day, but today, I'm very excited about this particular soapbox because I feel like I've read this article and I would love for you to tell everybody about it. So this article is written by the editor of Hot Hijab blog, Dilshad Ali. And I was very surprised. We love her. She's a good friend of ours and, you know, a cheerleader all the way from Mommy One Muslim. So we really, really love that. Um, And I was really surprised to find out that you share some very important history with her and that is your last names and after the Gulf War going through like all the teasing and stuff that happened after the Gulf War with Hussein um, and uh, what she talks about in this article which is titled let me get to it raising my kids to be unapologetic American Muslims and I thought this was important as a soapbox because we're all trying to raise unapologetic Muslims. However, this is a new phenomenon. So what she talks about is like the three phases kind of uh, of American Muslimism for American immigrants. So this is pretty specific to the immigrant population, the kids of the 80s and 90s, where the job was just to assimilate, then the um, 
uh, after, you know, during the Gulf War period, the folks who were dealing with uh, kind of the rise of Islamophobia and all of the acts that happened um, kind of in and around 9-11 against Muslims. And now with these post 9-11 kids that we're raising, telling them you're going to be as Muslim as you want to be and you're going to wear it on your arm and your name's going to be Muhammad and we're going to start naming our kids Osama again, you know? So all kinds of things that, you know, we wouldn't have thought about 20 years ago because we would have been too afraid. Like our kids are not afraid anymore. Like there was always fear in the prior two phases, but there isn't now. And, you know, just no matter what your setting is, whether you're living in Podunk America, no offense, Podunk America, or you're living in a very urban area, that we should be free to teach our kids now that whatever happened, we say this all the time on the podcast, wasn't their fault. Um, in terms of 9-11. So please, 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 kiddos, continue to wear your name on your sleeve, wear your identity on your sleeve, uh, live your life and your religion the way that you've been taught freely. Like actually believe in the constitution, you know, and actually believe that there are people there fighting for your right to uh, practice religious freedom and enjoy religious freedom. And the thing is our kids Our kids sincerely believe it because they don't know otherwise. They never saw that transition that you and I did, Zeba, and that a lot of people in our generation saw as children of immigrants. So for them, it's actually a little bit easier. And when our kids are willing to go out and talk about Islam and willing to go out and present about Islam, we shouldn't be holding them back out of our own fear. Our job is to be those supportive, you know, uh, uh, weights and structures for our kids to be the unapologetic Muslims that we strove to be. And we're kind of, um, uh, I'm saying the word not to be politically incorrect, but I think it's the appropriate word here. We were, re- our progress was retarded because of nine 11. And so we were kind of, we're a little bit stunted in our unapologetic Muslimism, but our kids aren't. So let's encourage them, give them wings, let them fly. And I thought that was a happy soapbox for today. That was, you know, because you always have these depressing soapboxes, and then I'm like sad and and depressed for the rest. Your weekend of the day. sucks because of me. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, she makes me drives me nuts. But no, this is actually really really good and funny having Hussein as the my maiden name going to husband. Like, quite frankly, I didn't, didn't know quite... her maiden name was Hussein. I thought that yeah, was awesome. it, it didn't quite change, but it it really is an interesting concept. And I feel like our children specifically because they don't have any actual ties to any other country, even right. if there and i think that that's part of the the reason is that they can fully embrace their american muslim or muslim american heritage and i'm super excited to see where they go for good or for bad and let's support them but you know it is a new year as we always say and we always pray for everybody to have a blessed one one free from pain and illness too bad i've already had a co- experience the norovirus and covid within the first week of january but you know it's good to maybe get it over with. So we, we really hope and, and pray that all of you guys are actually doing really well and you're healthy. And as moms, you know, we are constantly, constantly making um, this and so much more do us for our protection in hopes that one or more will stick because you never know what's going to stick and that our kids will become well-rounded adults and practicing Muslims. I mean, um, to that end, we launched 2022 with our moms of adult Muslim kids because quite frankly, we want to kind of see what the future is going to bring. This has been requested by moms multiple times in the past, including ourselves, and we were able to create an entire series around it just for them and for me. And um, we are happy today to have one of my original mama friends. Like, I think I was newly married when I met her and she had these two beautiful kids. And, you know, she's one of my OG friends from Chicago, Miss Joy Turner. She was actually one of our first guests in our podcast of unpublished episodes. Like they're going into the unpublished vault because guess what? It was one of amongst our lost recordings because we had a gin in our computer, tech hated us. We didn't even know what the heck we were doing until our amazing producer, Joe came and he set us straight. He's like, you girls, you ladies, he never calls us girls, have no idea what you're doing. Joy <laughs> is a, a, an HR professional and she is a mom of three and she's been married for 28 years to her husband, Eben, whom I also adore. And she is here to school us on the ins and outs of running not only her staff, but her household. And we welcome Joy. I am so excited to see you, even if it's not IRL. 
and welcome joy to mommy while muslim and hopefully we're not going to lose this recording yeah <laughs> three years later Joe taught me well. It shouldn't. Oh my <laughs> joy. Well, good morning. Assalamualaikum. It's so good to see you. I think the last time we did the recording was just all over phone, right? So we never got to see you on uh-huh. video. So this is super exciting for us. And this is new tech that um, Joe taught us. So inshallah, it will be foolproof and there are no gin. Inshallah. So we like to Thanks, kick Joe. off the podcast by asking our guests a little bit about their mom story and whatever they're comfortable sharing uh, about their kids and themselves as well as their mommying philosophy. Okay, so my mom's mm-hmm. story. She has an amazing one, by the way. Story? How'd you become a mom? Really? I do. <laughs> really? Well, remember your two oh, before God. and the one, one after? I mean, come on. That was like the best story. You have to tell everybody. Tell us the is. story. Two before, one after. Remember morning. your two before you converted, and then you had your Muslim oh. baby, and oh, okay, she has okay. an amazing story. I'm, I'm thinking of it. Because being a mom, as you know, is so many, yeah. you, you look at it from over here, yeah. you look at it from over here. It's like, what? I'm sorry. It's what? a very confusing um, question because everybody's like, how do I synthesize that into one short, there's no synopsis of motherhood because right. it's mm-hmm. an evolving process. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. So I, I grew up Catholic. All right. So we'll start with that. Uh, I grew up in a relatively uh, religious household, uh, although we were not all Catholic. My grandmother and my sister were uh, Baptist. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brother out in California was a Southern Baptist, conservative, very Baptist, right-wing, conservative church uh, pastor. <clears throat> my mother was very, very liberal. So I went to church wherever the car was going that Sunday. <laughs> you know? So sometimes I was with my grandmother. If they were having a tea and I got to have some of those finger yes, sandwiches after girl. church, I'm like, I'm going with, I'm going with mommy. Uh, <laughs> or if it was like a special Sunday at my mom's church where there was lots of singing, which I love church music, I would go with her. My sister also had a really great choir. So anyway, or I also went to Catholic school. So I, we had to go to Catholic church at least once a month. I don't know if it was a third or fourth Sunday, but whatever required Sunday we were supposed to be there, that's when I was there. Anyway, Anyway, <clears throat> so I met my husband when I was about 18, and um, we got married relatively quickly. Uh, I was married by about 20, and I had my first daughter, and then a couple of years later we had uh, our son. And um, so he was raised, generally speaking, raised Muslim, mm-hmm. right? I always say his, his life was loosely based on Islam, <laughs> um, where they, they went, they, they practiced, they, they did Ramadan, they did some fasting. Um, but they weren't like regular mosque goers and all that kind of stuff. And then when he went away to college, <clears throat> he kind of got away from the practice, right? Uh, and then when we met and got together and had got married and had started having children, he's like, okay, I got to get serious about this. He made out a will. He, you know, connected with his dad. I don't know what those conversations looked like. I mean, he was never disconnected from his dad, but he consulted with his father about, you know, I've got these kids coming, you know, what's what should I do, whatever. Um, and so he started to practice again. And I was not, I've never been a religious person, right? <clears throat> and at the time, I've got these, I've got this new little baby, right? I was not thinking, I was 20 years old, I was not thinking about religion. I'm just like, how can I get this girl to sleep through the night, <laughs> you know, nurse without giving me a ton of pain, yeah. And you know, allow me to, to to function as a as a normal human being with with the the sleep deprivation, whatever. So for years it went on like that, and then I had my son Noah at 22, and um, for I mean, you know he practiced. I didn't really, but I I uh, agreed to allow them to go. He, you know, he was like, I really want them to grow up in a Muslim household. I want them to go to Muslim school or Islamic school. So at the time we were living in Michigan, within a couple of years, when it was time for them to uh, go to preschool and uh, kindergarten, we found a school here in Chicago, right outside of Chicago, called CPSA. Oh my God, CPSA. (laughs) So um, we agreed to let the kids go there. I met a wonderful group of people. Um, I did not think I was going to be accepted. I thought it was going to be really weird, but it was so not, Mm -hmm. you know? I went in, I had on my long maxi dress, no sleeves, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And everybody welcomed me in with their jobs, with their hijabs, with whatever. Uh, they taught me how to cook a lot of Daisy style. <laughs> I, I was introduced uh, to Sean's seasoning packets, yes. which, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I need to turn down the heat. Uh, so I started baking. I started uh, playing around with different recipes. And anyway, that's another story. And they got to love me for my cooking skills. Mm-hmm. So that was really nice, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in 2000. 
three, <clears throat> I went to Isna for the very first time. And because I had been struggling, mm -hmm. I, had, I had been struggling about religion and should I convert? Do I need to convert? Is it necessary? Right. I'm like, they got one Muslim parent. What do they need me for? <laughs> right. But I went to Isna because it just didn't feel like me, even though I've met these wonderful ladies at CPSA. <clears throat> they just I'm like, I, I you know, and I, I played around with wearing a hijab. Right. And I put it on. I'm like, joy went away. Yeah. Like, that, that's not me. I don't I don't know that girl with the hijab on. So I was just like, oh, forget it. I'll, I'll I'll revisit later. So I went to Isna and I'm looking around like, oh my God. there are women here who look like me. Yes. They had short sleeves. They had tight jeans, not tight, but you know what I mean? Skinny jeans, long shirts, classy, you know, jewelry, Fendi bags. <laughs> I'm not a Fendi bag girl, but whatever. <laughs> just the diversity, the diversity of all these women. I never thought a Muslim woman could look like the women that I saw at Isna. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at that time where I was just like, okay, I can make this what I want it to be for me, right? Uh, within reason. I'm like, I, but I don't have to look a certain mm -hmm. way in order to be Muslim. And so that, that, that started my journey. And within a day or so, I, uh, I converted to Islam. Oh, subhanAllah. You took your shahada at Ista? No, oh, no, okay. no. I actually took it at my girlfriend's house, uh, Dalara mm -hmm. Saeed. Uh, she lived here in Naperville with me. Um, <clears throat> she has since moved to Chicago and I miss her so much. Um, I see her about as much as I see you, I Zayla. Know, it's crazy. But she's been so crazy <laughs> busy COVID. taking over the she world is. over there. <clears throat> Tell me about it. Tell me. About it. I, I feel, I feel unworthy. Like literally <laughs> all so you, amazing. all you ladies doing all these amazing things. I'm like, I am not worthy. I just, I go to work. I come home. That's like, <laughs> that is, we're we're going to get but into it, that. That in and of itself <clears throat> is a big thing. And that's what people need to yes. recognize. You can't minimize everybody's contribution because we're all doing what we can at the moment that we can, which is such a beautiful, amazing thing. And that's the beauty. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So anyway, so I, I, I did uh, convert to Islam in like 2003. And my son Mansoor was born in June of 2004. Yes. That's crazy. There you go. That's wonderful. So, so in raising yeah. these, like, I guess for you, it's also like Zabo. You have these two sets of kids yeah. that were kind of raised, you know, Very and, and that right? happens, right, for all of us yeah. in our, again, evolving process and learning <laughs> journey of motherhood. How did that look for you? Like, what did, what philosophies do you think you applied to the first two and then to Mansoor? I think their upbringing was very similar. Oh, okay. Um, Mans so Mansoor ended up going to um, a school called Kendi. Also, well, they didn't call themselves an, an, an Islamic school, although mo majority of the kids that went mm -hmm. there were Muslim. Uh -huh. But there were some uh, Chinese kids there. They spoke various languages. I want to say there were some Polish kids there, too. <clears throat> but a small environment similar to CPSA. Uh -huh. So... They, you know, Amir and Noah went to CPSA. He went to Kindy for about the same amount of time, like two, three years. And then we brought them into the Naperville School District, which is, you know, has a really good program, which is why we moved out here. I'm like, we moved all the way to Naperville and we're paying for private yeah. school. Like, what's that all about? <laughs> anyway, um, so there's, their upbringings were similar, They're somewhat sheltered, right? Like there were certain things they couldn't do or see on television and, you know, um, no, you can't go to the house party at your friend's house where the parents are not going to be mm -hmm. there to supervise. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> so, but other than that, they they grew they grew up like everybody else. You know, I mean, the kids they they pray with their father every single time. Like he's he's much better at it than I am, and I'm usually out and about. But he's very very um, I don't want to say rigid, but structured in terms of his prayer schedule. He, you know, stays on on track. So, you know, the kids always run to play, uh, pray with dad uh, while I'm doing something else, yeah. typically. Which is like the story of moms, right? Like, we, we kind of have to, yeah. to, which is why I feel like at least once a day for me, that is my pre-fudger, that's my fudger, like, time, is the, when I pray for the sake of praying and not for the sake of getting it done. Because it's my only time where I can actually process it, do it, enjoy it. And it really sets the tone for the rest of the day. Because for the rest of the day, guess what? You're just checking the box, at least for me. And I'm not going to lie. But, you know, you do have the older kids. They're 28 and 26 now, which is kind of crazy and unreal for, for me to even imagine. Because I remember you told me about Mansoor when at, either at my baby shower 
with my oldest or right after he was born. I, I can't quite remember because he's a 2003 baby. And I have to tell you, like, with my two sets, granted, they're being raised in a very similar way, but my how I um, interact with them is very different. And, and I feel that way because I always joke that my older two are my guinea pigs and I've learned what not to do. And I'm able to recreate and do things differently with my younger two. But, you know, as they're getting older, I'm curious because I do have an adult child now, which is weird to say, considering he just texted me like five minutes before we started this. Like, uh, could you help me find whatever? And I'm like, are you serious right now? But what are some of the challenges that you face um, with your adult children because your role with them and your impact in their lives do change. So how do you, one, what are some of the challenges and what are some of the blessings that come with having adult children? Because that's what I'm really looking forward to. Thank you so much for asking the question in that way, because I just would have gone on and on for a half hour about how horrible. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Horrible. No, because it no. is a fun like, thing. It it's is. a blessing. Like they're your friends. They're their own no, it people. Is. It's like an amazing <clears throat> thing, thing to watch, you know? So one of the challenges I'll say with my daughter is um, she's a beautiful girl. Mashallah, she's, she really she's is. She's beautiful. And on the inside and out, she has just got the biggest heart I have ever seen, aside from my mother. And I always say, she's like my mini mom. Like my mom, <laughs> mini. She's even more of my mother than I am, oh. right? <clears throat> she is just so giving and so thoughtful. And to see her still single hurts my heart. Aww. Because I, I truly, I, I believe she deserves someone wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I know that she um, wants to be in a committed relationship. And so she's, you know, she's doing what she can to, to get there. So that's definitely a challenge for me. Um, and is it because you started so early? So then you feel like <clears throat> she should be further along? Like, what do you, where do you, why do you no. feel that way? No, I, I just feel that way because I did find someone so yeah. young. I wasn't trying to get exactly, married at 19. Bro. Like, I wasn't looking for a husband. Yeah. I was just like, oh, he looks like a good one. Yeah. And why not? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's going to be a great me. dad with a nice butt. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right? Um, I, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm like, oh, my God, my, my husband's so hot. Like, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, the fact that you, could, you still um, think that's how many years later? I love later? that. After 28 years. I still think that. Oh, my God. Don't tell yeah. me. Don't tell me. I tell him all the time. Um, but no, but like. I know it sounds weird, but th it's a thing. Yeah. Like my daughter, she's such a daddy's yeah. girl, right? She and I are very, very close, but like I know she would love to be married to someone similar to her yeah. dad, oh. right? Tall and strong and, you know, committed to his family and faithful and, you know, he just, he's just good. Yeah. He's just Marshall, good. Marshall. And Uzma, to your point a, a few, a moment ago, <clears throat> that's the best thing I ever could have done for my children is, is find a wonderful father, mm -hmm. father for them. He has been such a great dad. Yeah. Um, he's traveled a heck of a lot, but he's never missed a beat. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Like he's he's always there for us all the time. Yeah. And I hate to burst any way, bubbles, so. but you know what I was always taught growing up by my mom and this is like your cynical immigrant mom, right? <laughs> so her dad was like what you're describing. Like my grandfather, you know, may Allah grant him the highest level of Jannah. He was not only handsome and hardworking, he basically, my grandmother was a son and he revolved around her, like yeah. his everything mm -hmm. waking. And after Allah was his wife because he had lost his mom um, to childbirth uh, when he was just 13. Oh. And like pregnant women scared the heck out of him because he was so afraid that his wife would die in, in childbirth mm -hmm. that he only let her get pregnant three times. And then he, he basically <clears throat> worshiped the ground she walked on. And he was a terrific father. My grandma was the mean one, and he was the one who'd be like, okay, I'm waking up the kids. Go to sleep, go to sleep, you know? So he was really sweet <laughs> like that. But my mom said, you know, oh, I can't wait to marry somebody like Baba. And her mom was like, oh, tch, forget about that. He's like one in a million. You're never going to find anybody like that. It's just not even going to happen. If he feels like a one of a kind, yeah. and he's so talented. This is not about him. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, you know, for our daughter's expectations yeah. and our expectations for our daughters, it's, you know, I don't know. My mom always set me up for failure. <laughs> she was like, just don't even expect anything like that. Right. You know, <laughs> she 
<laughs> she's like, I got the opposite of my dad. And then I was like, right. well, that's good for me because then maybe but I'll get the opposite of my generation. dad. Yeah. Exactly. So I feel like I got it, alhamdulillah. So I don't know. Let's see. But it, it's a matter of managing expectations for ourselves and our kids too. And I don't know that I figured out how to do that. So we haven't even had this conversation with my daughter yet. Yeah, I managing expectations is hard, especially when they get to be adults, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you see them doing things. And it's just like you want to intervene, but they don't, they don't, they didn't mm-hmm. listen to you when they were teenagers. Exactly. You think they're going to listen to you at 27? Yeah. No. Um, so I, 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 I give my input every once in a while. You know, it's it's typically a disapproving nod of some kind, like, mm, really? Yeah. Is, that, is that what you're going to do? Mm. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, with my son, what are my challenges with him? <clears throat> are we talking about the oldest or the youngest? I'm sorry, my oldest okay. son, Noah. So Noah just turned 25 in December. I think my issue with Noah is that he thinks he knows everything, <laughs> like so many other 25-year-olds. The oldest always does. <laughs> well, he's the middle. He's the oh, he's the middle. Oh. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is, even though he doesn't, oh, things always work out for Noah. Alhamdulillah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, alhamdulillah to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I say, God, you know, we had an agreement. <laughs> you were going to implement some natural consequences for this young man. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, uh, because all the things that I said, he never listened to. Um, but like you said, Alhamdulillah, he is, he is safe. He is healthy. He is strong. Uh, he has a wonderful young woman in his life now, um, who I adore, who I adore. Yeah. And, um, so that, that's my challenge with Noah because things, he doesn't, he doesn't listen. Things don't always work out exactly the way they're supposed to. But they always work out in his favor at some point, yes. mm-hmm. right? Like he 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 doesn't learn enough of the lesson, you know. You <laughs> with lessons with children, they have to feel a little bit of pain, yes. just a little bit, just a tiny little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Noah gets no pain. <laughs> so don't tell anybody. I wish my son pain. Yeah. No, I, like, I know. That's I not what I'm saying. It. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, to that end, as a I mom, just... what's it like? Like, because you're essentially. <laughs> watching the train wreck about to happen like how do you mm-hmm. not interview because as somebody like my but ocd the last I'm already, minute, like, it diverts itching. or the brakes come on at the last second oh. like he's always good he's he's always good so yeah. i know my my in-laws pray for him constantly <laughs> um and the prayer from from these warriors uh, i think you know, but Noah, Amira, and Mansoor together, uh, they're they're very protected by the prayers of their grandparents. By God's uh, grace. And, you know, yeah, right, you know, and by us as well. But uh, the strength of the prayer of, of my in-laws, I think, yes. <laughs> kind of carries them all through. It's, 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 it's nice to see. So I'm always really happy when um, I hear good news from them, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know, Noah got his first job, like his first professional job over the summer. Uh, After a couple of bumps in the road, he missed out on one opportunity and, you know, didn't get another one, whatever. And he, you know, he was starting to feel a little dejected and all that. But it was like two, three months. I'm like, dude, relax. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay. (laughs) Relax. But, uh, and then with Mansoor, challenges with him. So Mansoor is 17 and... um, He's almost like an only child yeah. because Amir and Noah really are grown and gone and he misses them, but he doesn't really express it as much. Uh, but I know he misses them and I think he gets lonely. Aww. I'm pretty sure he does. I, I, I think he does. Um, and this is not really a Muslim thing. It's more of a, just a teenager mm-hmm. thing. He's got some insecurities, yeah. right? Um, about his looks, about, mostly about his looks. Like he compares himself to his siblings quite often. And so he's a handsome kid, but he's my only kid with like big chubby cheeks. He's the cutest. (laughs) He's so cute. And, but you know, like this year he's broken out significantly. Like he's gotten a lot of acne on his face and stuff. And so we've tried to modify his diet, which he doesn't really do because he loves food as much as his mother. <laughs> um, but certain things, they don't, they don't break me out like they break him right. out. Right. So 
we've been trying to, you know, do some diet modification. We went to the dermatologist to get some different, you know, topical ointments or whatever that we could resolve. But, and then my other challenge with Mansoor is him committing to his high school work. Again, none of this has to do with Islam. It just has to do with them being, teenagers, being yeah. typical teenagers. They We deal with the same stuff every everybody else right. deals with. <clears throat> but how do you respond to him differently than perhaps you responded or reacted to Amira and Noah at the same age? Because there is um, quite a bit of an age difference between your number two and three. Yeah. And so Noah has been, he's become the counselor Aww. for the family. That's, like, the really, middle Noah, chi- that's the really? middle child, though. Really? That's the role. They're kind of like the mediator. But it's, it's funny. Um, sorry. No worries. They were coming in the door. So um, how do I respond differently? Uh, I don't always, and I wish I did. Okay. So, That's fair. you know, not too long ago, not too long ago, I was having an argument with Mansoor about not doing, you know, or I was fussing at him about not doing something. College applications, oh God, homework, it's a something. Nightmare. We're in the same <laughs> process right now. It is I'm a like, breaking why is it nightmare. So darn hard? <laughs> I even made an Excel spreadsheet with all the yeah! different categories. Do this, oh gosh, and that, and that, you guys are I'm like, does everybody have the same Excel? <laughs> Don't start. Don't start. We're going to get to blessings. We're going to exactly. get to blessings. I swear. <laughs> but. You know, Noah came up out of the basement and he was like, Mom, you're saying the same things over and over and over. You did the same thing to me. You got to find a different way. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? What? What are you saying to me? (laughs) But by the way, that is a blessing. One, he can come to you in a way Mm -hmm. that says, Mom, let's back up. This is how we can do things differently. What? That is a blessing. It is. It is. Um, The the fact that his um, girlfriend is uh, a fourth year clinical psychology major. It helps. That helps. Uh-huh. Helps. Yeah. So, I know. I'm like, <laughs> she she has done amazing things for this young man. I'm like, like she, she, he was she was he was her first project, right? Like, totally. first, like <laughs> let me kind of make this young man into exactly who I want him to be forever. That's such exactly. a That's so such funny. a blessing. She, she's she's picking up where I left off. All the stuff that okay. I didn't get to finish with him, she's going to complete it, which I think is awesome. I love that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he intervened and I modified my tone. I was like, okay. And, you know, he, he stayed for maybe 20, 30 minutes and kind of facilitated the conversation. Now, Mansoor, what do you have to say? Mom, do you have anything? I'm like, you know. Wow. It was very effective, though. I I, I will say. I will say. So that that's one of the blessings. Um, so my my reaction to things is not always ideal, but as I get older, I recognize my errors. I do I I, I do my best to modify my behavior because I know the result, right? Like I know, and I and I don't know how I became a yeller. I didn't grow up with yellers. My father never barely said a word, um, and my mother never yelled ever. She was the most gentle person ever um i she she mastered the the mom disappointing you know head nod really really the guilt trip that's the guilt trip yeah um so yeah i wish i had more of her in me because i think it would have it would have saved a lot of grief because i think when we go nuclear like we can be sometimes i think it makes the situation worse um so but and they tune out Right. So really you're yelling and they're not receiving it anyway. So then you're like, my throat's hurting. They're not receiving it. What is the point? And the the college application is still not done. The assignment is still not done. You know, all these different things are still in play. Right. And it's like, what did you gain from this? Exactly. The the blessing, I would say, is um, learning lessons and, Mm -hmm. you know, maintaining a a tighter bond as time goes on. Because yes. we're all so invested, right? And to see my oldest son, my middle child, get involved in an argument with, with with me and my youngest, that lets me know he's he's con- he's still connected to us. He's still yes. invested in in the success of our family, which makes me feel good. I mean, he's and just I trying to save realize. save the little one from me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't realize. You know, this kind of leads into one of the questions that I had later on was what are the advantages of having these adult kids? Because it seems like 
you know, it would be such a bad thing once they grow up. I mean, that's how I'm, I'm thinking of it. That's my mindset right now because I just don't know. But to have another adult who's still close enough to my younger kid's age to mm-hmm. kind of perform that mediator role mm-hmm. was not something that I considered. And Oh, no. That, and that's going to benefit you That's so lot. amazing. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate hearing that because now it's like, oh, how do I groom a mediator out of my middle one? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So with the two that are living out of your home, Mm -hmm. and for me as a type A wanting to control everything, what would, (laughs) what would you, how would you tell me to slow my roll and put my seatbelt on and shut my mouth? Because if I find out that my kids are not doing something that they were raised not to do, or um, just aren't living the way I, I thought that they should be living. What do I do? I mean, they're not under my supervision technically. They're grown adults. They can technically do whatever they want. So how do I manage my own thought process and how do I manage my actions? Because I appreciate you saying don't go nuclear because no going nuclear is the Joffrey way. So <laughs> I don't know anything else. How would I how would I not hit the red button? Like think back to ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. I think back to myself at 16, 17, 18. Uh, I got married at 19, so That's my true. 20s were pretty tame. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of people, a lot of young people, don't you do a lot of questionable stuff? Oh, yeah. Between 17, 18 on up. Oh, for right? sure. And so I didn't. You- I, yeah, I need to do that. That's what happens when you get married as a baby, Zeba. I still need to do something. I always say, I'm like, man, I did I'll do get something you. with you. I'll do something it's, with oh, you. It's kind of oh, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, like so a like, girl's way too or... late, right? Exactly. It's never like, too it's late to act out. For you. Yeah. It's well, midlife crisis it's, time for us. Right. Um, my suggestion is hmm, instead of going nuclear, you. Y- just think back to the times when you did it before Mm -hmm. and it didn't work and think about how you feel after right whether you're cursing or fussing or yelling or screaming it's like that just doesn't feel good for anybody Mm -hmm. so i'm 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 talking myself into this because i know this i know this and i know there's going to be another time when i'm going to be very upset with one of my children Mm -hmm. um and so I just, sometimes I just walk away and I'll be like, you know what? I, I can't manage this right now. Mm-hmm. This is not working for me. That's my new phrase for everybody. Mm-hmm. This is not working for me. <laughs> so I I'm going to, I'm going to go and um, rest on it, think on it or, or not think on it for about an hour and I'll get back to you when I can. Yeah. Oh, um, I love that. That's good. Oh yeah. That is, that's my new thing. Cause I just, I don't want an ulcer. I don't want a mm-hmm. migraine. I don't want to feel guilty for saying or doing something that. I did out of anger, right? Because it just, that that doesn't work for anybody. I'm, I'm learning so much today. Oh, good. I'm learning so much too. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) But no, I, I mean, I practice a lot of what I'm preaching, so to speak. Um, But it's not, is it always consistent? Nope. Mm -hmm. I am human. Um, Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I just, I want good relationships with my children. I I want them to stay close to me. Mm -hmm. I want them to confide in me. And I can honestly say my oldest two in particular have confided in me, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, so much in the last few years. And Noah, sometimes you don't even want to know. Well, <laughs> sometimes I don't want to know. Yeah. But uh, it's it's not really bad stuff. It's just, uh-huh. you know, like yeah. Noah, he'll say, Mom, I'm so, the stuff I did when I was a teenager, I was like, don't tell me. He was like, I'm not. Uh, he was like, I just <laughs> yeah. want to apologize. Aww. I just, you know, I just, I was, I was not, I was not a good teenager. I'm like, really? What did you, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm i looking for that because we're in the throes of that. And I'm like, I really don't want to know. And I'm hoping to get to where you are because well, he protected, I he didn't do this because mm-hmm. whatever he did, I don't really know about. I mean, I obviously know about some stuff, mm-hmm. um, right. but nothing that put him in jail or um, you know, in the hospital, God forbid. In the, yeah. it, well, <sighs> oh, Lord. You know, he did have that accident. We yes. talked about that last time. He had a terrible yeah. uh, a car accident. He was in the car with some other boys, mm-hmm. and one of the boys passed away. <clears throat> oh, no. And Noah did end up in the hospital that night. And it was a, a very, very challenging experience for a long yeah. time. But mm-hmm. I think we're finally on the other side of that. I love that. I love yeah. that. But but that goes to show you too, like with the love and support that you provide, you guys provided as a family, and not being judgmental, and to take it like I'm not ready to talk about this, and taking a step back, he was able to kind of 
have that resilience and getting through such a hard time. And that's ultimately what we all want as parents, right? Is right. is that opportunity to provide a space for them that, you know, they're not all going to be perfect. They're not all going to make the right choices. They're they're not all going to do the right things, but to, to create a space for them to be able to come back from all of that and say, I'm really sorry that I put you through that. You guys have done something well, right? And, you know, the fact that you guys are still loving each other after 28 years, we'll have to bring you back for, like, the, the husband-wife thing in our February series because that, <laughs> we also need to take some tips from you. But, you know, if you've listened to the podcast before, I get an opportunity to get to know you on a deeper level, and we're going to do a rapid-fire um, segment where you I'm gonna ask questions, you tell me what's off the top of your mind, whatever it happens to be. I was going to set 90 seconds on the clock. I am. I'm ready. She is ready. Okay, so if you were going to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would that be? Oh, gosh. Something Thai. Thai Ooh. food. I love Thai oh God, food. I'm so hungry. <clears throat> oh, a red so, curry. A red curry oh, with vegetables. You and I oh. need to eat Thai together because I was thinking of the number 27 at my favorite Thai restaurant. It's a red oh curry. God, I just don't know the me name. Hungry. I haven't <laughs> eaten yet. So what is the one thing that surprises people the most about you? Um, that you have adult children, I would imagine. <laughs> that definitely surprises people when I say that my daughter's 27 for sure. Yeah, mashallah. Um, that, okay, so this is a fun fact that one of my first jobs, I worked uh, overnight at a gas station in Michigan. As a, oh, as a I night, love that. As a, a night clerk at a gas nice. station. <laughs> and I know that you're not a night person, so how the heck did you stay awake? We're going to have to talk about that. I, I worked there for three months. <laughs> I, mean, like, I can't do this anyway. It's like me trying to work nights. I think I would be like comatose by the morning. But like, if you were to become an expert in something, what would that be? It can be anything in the world. Food. Oh, Ooh. love it. Yeah. I would love to go to cooking school or culinary school. Aww. I would love Guess to. Guess what? It's not too late. It's not too late, babe. Art it's Institute has the best <laughs> culinary school in the Midwest. It's on my bucket list, man. I, there you I go. I feel like I need to do it. I would Let's... love to be an expert in all things food. Oh, my God. I love that. I love that. Do you want so to ask you, another question? You've got... Yeah. What is the best piece of advice that you've given us a lot of advice today? But what's the best piece of advice that someone has given you about kids that you can now look back on with your adult children to be like, that was actually a really good piece of advice. That's the easiest question ever. Anytime I ever went to my mom and said, Amira did this, Noah did this. Mansoor was just, you know, he was an infant when she passed away, but um, love them. Oh, yes. Love them. Goosebumps. Yeah. Goosebumps. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, everything, however you react to your children, should always be out of love. Even when you're 100%. the most upset with them, they're extensions of you. And you yeah. don't want to hurt them. You want to love them. Every expression should be one of love. Alhamdulillah. I, uh, I totally 100% agree. I'm adding so that to my repertoire. So even though they're driving me nuts, love them. <laughs> they're driving you nuts right now, but love them, love them, love them. Unconditionally. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. When they're gone, you mm -hmm. are going to miss them. Mm -hmm. Why are we going to start crying now? Oh, at the we end. made it the whole episode without <laughs> crying. Oh, and now she asked that cry. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I miss them already, and they're not leaving. Like at the beginning of the week, I dropped off my son at public school for the first time in two years. I bought so hard. I know. I was like, oh my God. And he's, he's so only like, 12. He's not gone. He's, I'm like, what time is he coming home? Three. I'm like, okay, he's coming home at three. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. So all of the, this whole month is like building a lot of anxiety for me. But I, everything that you said before this. It's like really helpful, and it's like okay, I can I can put away the red button, and put away just the love red them. button. Yeah, just yeah. be there. Honestly, uh, I mean, so know, even all of them are here to home with me right now, and I'm like, uh, I kind of, I mean, it's going to be very different this yeah. time next year when we don't have somebody under our, our roof, you know, like yeah. in in a natural way, like where it's just a given, and he's not a visitor. Like I think that that's going to be. Uh, well, he will be a visitor, I should say. And yeah. that's going to be a very awkward, sad moment for me, it, it, I think. It, so 
my favorite, one of my favorite movies is um, Inside Out. Oh my God, that movie. Oh. What is <sighs> it? What is it? Uh, Watch it. The cartoon, right? The Pixar? Yes. Yeah. It's the one. Joy and Oh, inside it, the movie. Oh, it's the cartoon. Okay, so I'm picturing, I'm like, I thought there was a cartoon named. Yeah, it made me cry the entire episode. That movie was so so integral to our life. And one of the things that I I think about all the time are the the islands that are breaking down, that are crumbling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as they're crumbling, you're, you're, you're devastated, right? Yep. But, you know, but then some spoiler else alert. Up. Yeah. The, the elephant's going to disappear. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, no. Bing bong. That breaks Don't my Don't go away. Heart. So, and I'll tell you a quick story. So, we've been redecorating our house and we've been painting all the walls and filling in all the nicks and scratches and all that kind of stuff. Years ago, um, my son and his friends had a BB gun fight in our house and oh my, he and lied into holes. Yeah. So, we had the holes in the wall, just a few. Yeah. And my husband redid our bedroom and he filled in the holes and it just oh, I was just so sad. No, so don't. the traces of that BB gun fight it's that gone. you know, it's gone. And then also in my son's room, we were washing the walls preparing to paint the room and there was a little handprint. Oh. I wiped it away and I was like, Why did I do that? Oh, oh my I gosh. Know. So <clears throat> When oh you think gosh. about now, we're gonna be crying. I know. Now we're gonna be crying. <laughs> when you think about those little wretched creatures who drive you yes. crazy, <laughs> yeah. Think about the fact that you're done chasing them. Yeah, you're done doing flashcards. Yeah. Oh my god. You're yeah. done convincing them to eat peas. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> You're trying to mold them to be wonderful people who show up in the world. Yeah. And that's one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. I've never gotten one complaint about my children. Not one complaint. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. They, they suck with me sometimes, but they're yeah. great with everyone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, what know? are you talking about? What? Yeah. yeah, okay. You know, how many times have your kids gone to someone else's house and they took out the trash or they washed the dishes or they, they bathed their dog or something? I'm sorry. Like, 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 what? They're so polite. And I'm like, which? What? Mine? <laughs> Mine? <laughs> right. So they're wonderful. They're wonderful. And um, we just have to we just have to learn to appreciate their 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 wonderfulness. I have to say, like, I mean, that's the beauty of having the two sets of kids, yeah. right? Because you had the older set that you had the like for me with my younger two, I was so super hyper focused on being present because yeah. I recognized how fast it went. Right. So like even yesterday, I had so much work to do. And then Zan was like you didn't cuddle me this whole week. And I was Aww. like, you're right. I didn't cuddle you this whole week. I can do all this stuff later. And we just cuddled and watched <laughs> basketball. And as soon as he went back to work, sleep, I was able to go back to work. But I was so present in the moment. And I feel like with Zachary and Zara, I didn't have that opportunity because I was right. always looking to that next stage. Um, the next stage and like survive because you're just in this in the trenches that you're like I can't wait for the so I didn't get a chance to enjoy those moments so I definitely feel like as I'm coming to the end of the road with Zachariah like I'm really trying to be present and I feel like that's a really hard thing to do sometimes when you are still in the thick of it but I agree it goes so fast and one day they tell you everything Like, I remember Zachary would come in every day and be like, you haven't tucked me in yet. You have to come and tuck me in. You have to come and tuck me in. Like, and I remember getting annoyed by it. Yeah. And then he started even saying, one day, I'm not going to come in here. Aww. One day, I'm not. And he does not come in now. You see Aww. what I'm saying? So, like, I, and he knew it. And he would tell me. Like, it was more of emotional blackmail to get me at <laughs> stop doing what I was doing to do it. But the reality of the situation is, like, he would tell me. One yeah. day, I'm not going to come and ask you to tuck me in, Mom. I'm not going to do it. Granted, mm-hmm. I was lucky he did it till he was in eighth grade. So I got a big, long chuck of it. And sometimes he still sleeps in my little nest. I'll see his feet poking out. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it does end. So yeah. I'm, yeah. And now I have to go, because I think we have um, bylines, yeah, Isma, and I have yeah. to go wash my nose and blow my nose out. Thanks, I know. Joy, Jay, Joy <laughs> good job. You're making supposed us to bring us joy. It. She did that bring us joy. joy. This is that joy. Is. 
This is joy. <laughs> it is, you know, it is joyful to not be mothering them directly anymore, but doing yeah. it afar well, and observing, islands. like, Think the about work. the new the islands, islands, right? Yeah, that, that exactly. form. Because I'm very optimistic about the future. New islands are going to form, and they're just going to be so much fun. Yeah. Inshallah, exactly. and on me, and hopefully we'll talk to you, <clears throat> we'll talk later about Amira and, like, getting that the, the girl set up because it is something that's so stressful right because you're like how you can, you're not in control of that and it's nope. so annoying yep. but yeah. maybe arranged marriage yeah Would there you, you go arranged marriage mm. or set up that's the issue is my kids will not do any of that she would definitely do a setup but i would never you know demand you oh know, no. that she you know, I mean, I had an that, arranged marriage where nobody demanded anything of me except be nice to the boy. Right. And I, I and I don't want to be uh, super. I don't, don't want to be ignorant when it comes to that because I know arranged marriages are not exactly forcing someone to get married. I yeah, mean, it's yeah, more yeah, of a yeah. setup. And if yeah. you you know you date a little bit and you like them, whatever. She, I think she would be open to it with the right person. I just, I just don't come across that many. You know, good people. Young, young, <laughs> or matchmakers. Well, young people that I would pair her with. I don't know. So yeah. That's another, that's definitely another day. <laughs> another topic. Yeah, we'll definitely another day. We'll talk about well, that. Well, thank okay, you so perfect. much for today. This was thank awesome you, and so, so helpful. And, you know, we look forward to learning more from you in the future. Inshallah. <clears throat>